हेलो स्टूडेंट इन दिस क्लास वी विल लर्न अबाउट सॉल्यूशंस सो वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग व्हाट वी आर सपोज टू लर्न अबाउट द सॉल्यूशन अ बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग मस्ट बी रिक्वायर्ड इफ यू वांट टू लर्न इफ यू वांट टू गेन एनी इंफॉर्मेशन और नॉलेज अबाउट द सॉल्यूशन सो वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द सोल्यूशन नाउ वी लुक फॉर द सोल्यूशन हियर तो वॉट आर द सोल्यूशन सोल्यूशन बेसिकली यू हैव सीन सो मेनी टाइम्स इन यूर लाइफ सो जनरली even i can prepare a very simple solution with with salt and water also i can prepare a very simple solution of sugar and water also salt plus water also even you can prepare any kind of solution if you are in a chemistry lab but the thing is that first of all try to understand what is solution so solution is very first thing very important that is my homogeneous mixture of two or more substances how can i say that it's a homogeneous homogeneous means it should be in a one phase only it should be only in one phase try to understand solutions must be having homogeneous okay see homogeneous mixture of two or more substances is called solution actually okay solution the very first or basic fundamental characteristic of solution is it should be homogeneous fine it could be heterogeneous also this is also possible here but our focus is on the homogeneous mixture of two or more components that will become solution thing is that there just to explain this definition i have one pretty simple example as i told you that water and sugar even you can prepare this type of solution at your home also fine if i am going to mix sugar and water thoroughly i will get a solution and that is homogeneous how can you say that that is homogeneous see one phase only only water will be visible to you no sugar will be visible thing is that there is no boundary of separation you cannot say that from this point to this point i have sugar and from this point to this point i have water so the boundary of separation is not at all there so that is called my homogeneous so after learning about this now we have to go for few more things about the solutions here okay fine my dear student now thing is that solution is homogeneous you have already seen this now the thing is that i am talking more about the solutions here so for that i have to go for one simple activity here what i will do here simply i am going to prepare one liter of sugar and water solution i am going to mix it thoroughly so that all sugar is going to dissolve in that after doing that after doing that what i will take i will take out the 1 ml sample from the different parts of the solution okay i am going to take 1 ml of sample from the different parts of the solution it means how it is possible this is my beaker you will find beaker very easily in chemistry lab so this is my water in this <clears throat> and here i am adding sugar in this so now my sugar water solution is ready fine sugar water solution is ready and its quantity may be 1 liter 2 liter 500 ml whatever it may be now you do one thing take one sample one sample per 1 ml from this portion 1 ml from this sample portion from this portion from this portion like that you can go for this only so now what will happen here what is happening here so you go for any portion of it you go any portion of it what you will get here so you will find two most interesting observations here what two observations you will find here you will find the same kind of sweetness and you will find the same kind of molecules there fine same kind of sweetness okay it means that sugar and water is available everywhere even you will find the same number of molecules of my water and sugar also after that i can have i have one more example with you that is my dust free air actually what is the meaning of this dust free air means what actually thing is that 
we have already seen that air is homogeneous mixture of gases homogeneous means in a first instance try to understand it's a one phase system you will find only one phase air is gas yes my dear is a mixture of gases so generally all the gases its physical state i you are all aware about that that is in the gaseous form only now if i am going to add dust particles in that if i am going to add dust particles in that what you will find you are simply adding some solid particles in that you have a gaseous phase with you you have a gaseous substance with you now i am adding some solid substance in that dust particle it could be a micro also or macro also but the thing is that they are solid in nature <clears throat> solid is going to mix in a gas here i am going to change the phase my dear now my air is not homogeneous now my air is heterogeneous why because it is not a one phase now it has a solid phase also because of the dust particles it has the gaseous phase also because of the mixture of gases so always try to understand one thing dust free air is always a homogeneous mixture of gases okay and if i'm talking about the different type of gases in air so definitely no doubt in that nitrogen 78% and oxygen is 20.9% i hope you are all aware about it this is a very simple thing that you should know okay so after learning about these examples air homogeneous mixture without air particles dust particles thing is that now if i am talking about the components of my solutions so thing is that solution is made from two components here solute and solvent okay solute and solvent so first i have to talk about the solvent here the component of a solution which dissolve the other component okay so here what is important here which dissolves the component i told you that solution has two components so one component okay which dissolves the other component in itself in itself is called my solvent is called my solvent okay and apart from that what is another distinctive property with the solvent a solvent is larger component of the solution which is available in the large amount okay take a very simple example try to dissolve one teaspoon of sugar in water so water one liter water is there and i have a maybe a teaspoon full of sugar so water is in the higher amount now one liter water definitely the quantity of water is higher than the sugar also fine so here the water is becoming the solvent here why because largely solvent is larger component of my solution so my water plus sugar solution which is having the larger component now definitely that is my water only so water will become the solvent here okay now if i am talking about sugar now what sugar is doing there actually the solution see now the sugar is become the solute here the sugar is becoming the solute okay how can you define the sugar here solute here the component of the solution which dissolve in the solvent is called see i am dissolving sugar in water so the component of solution which dissolves okay which dissolve in solvent sugar is dissolving in water so that is called my solute my dear usually solute is the smaller component okay 2 g 5 g of sugar in 1 liter of water 2 5 6 g 10 g 50 g of salt in a water so generally the smaller component is called my solute and the larger component is called my solvent here i can take one more example that is my copper sulfate solution a typical blue color a beautiful blue color solution if i want to make a copper sulfate solution here what i am supposed to do i should have a copper sulfate crystals with me a solid in the solid state and i should have a water which is in the liquid state 
if I'm going to mix it very well, what I'll have get, I will get a blue color solution. So that solution is called my <clears throat> actually homogeneous. Why? Because there is no boundary of separation. One phase is available. So here you can prepare n number of solutions using the water here. So water is available in higher amount here and my solute either it is sugar or salt or maybe a copper sulfate or any other kind of salt which is dissolved in water. So the smaller amount is solute is available in larger amount the solvent is available here. So we have seen about the two major components of the solution that is the solvent and that is the solute also. So solute may be solid, may be liquid also. It depends on the type of solution we have. Solvent generally are liquid in nature. Okay, generally we have seen the aqueous solution. Generally you might heard about that aqueous solution. What is the meaning of that? Aqueous means water. Okay, aqueous solution of salt. It means that water is my solvent and salt is my solute here. So we have seen what we have seen here. We have seen about the solution here. We have seen the examples of solutions here. We have seen the two major components of the solution. That is my solute and my solvent. Okay, my dear student. Now, after that, I have one more example here. The common salt and water, we have already seen that. Even you can take example of any other solution and you can identify which one is your solute and which one is your solvent. Here I am going to take a very pretty interesting example here that is your cold drinks. That is called the carbonated drinks, soft drinks. In this kind of drinks, carbon dioxide is dissolved in water. Okay, carbon dioxide is dissolved in water. So carbon dioxide is what actually? This is my solute. And water is here, water is my solvent. So your all soft drinks, all your carbonated drinks, soda water drinks, in which CO2 is my solute and water is my solvent. So here this is another example of my solution also. Okay, but in this case carbon dioxide is a gaseous state. So here my solute is in the gaseous state. The water is still is in the liquid state. So here we can find two more example. One example you have already seen about it. This is my another example. So my dear student, you have seen about the solutions and different components of it. So thank you dear students. Thanks for watching my video. So I will come again with new topic, with new learning. So thanks once again. Thanks for watching my video.